example of uh, how you would use a, a psychodrama with someone that was struggling with using a substance? So typically with, with patients, I like to start with a decisional balance. So basically a kind of a two by two cognitive therapy technique. You know, what's the positives of use? What's the negatives of your use? Positives of changing, negatives of changing. And that's good because one, it gives them a chance to talk about what I love about the drugs because that's often been a forbidden conversation in traditional old-fashioned approaches. Let's talk about the love for the drug. Let's also how, how bad it would be to give it up. So that opens up. But also, why are you unhappy? And what, do you, what possibilities can you see for yourself if you change this? You don't have to be stopping the changing it. So I would set that up. And then a number of ways to do chairs. So one would be to have one chair representing the part that wants to continue to use, and one chair representing the part that wants to change or stop or do something different. That's our most basic technique and that's a wonderful way of working. Sometimes when you, f you find that when people discuss why they use, there are actually a number of motivations for using. And stereotypically, part of me uses because it gives me pleasure to use and part of me uses because I'm in pain and suffering, trauma, depression, psychosis, something. So it might be interesting to split those into a chair that this is the part that I use because it gives me pleasure, I'm with my friends, I have fun, it's exciting. Maybe the chair goes, you know, I use because I'm lonely, I use because I'm hurting, I'm using because I'm still bothered by that death, I mean, you know, because those may be different parts. And those actually parts may use drugs in different ways. Most the other side is, but I need to change here, this is hurting me, this is, this is stealing from me, this is taking my life. So a complicated dialogue. Another way they do it is actually have a person, have the person sit in one chair and imagine their drug in the opposite chair. Talk to the cocaine, talk to the marijuana, talk to the heroin. You know, I, I walk them through, how did we meet? What, was our early, what were the early days like? What were our good experiences? What were the bad experiences? What do I love about you? What do I hate about you? What frightens me about you? And then to grief, because I think grief is important. If I were to give you up, how sad would I be? And to explore those cycles. And I would say those are sort of two basic, probably those primary ways I would work sort of dramatically in a gestalt way with, with patients to explore that relationship and to look at their internal forces. And I think out of that, people go, okay, you know, either I'm going to continue this and not continue that, or yes, I think I should make some changes, or, you know, it's time to stop. But they come to that through that process. It's not me telling them.